Hi, welcome to the uh, Facebook Live today on Connectra. We're with the Disability Foundation and I'm Renee. Um, I'm a registered dietitian here in Vancouver, BC. And I love talking about food and nutrition and doing cooking demos and sharing recipes. So here I am today, again on Tuesday for a vitamin D presentation. So this is also a very hot topic now, um, mainly because we are in a really interesting situation. Obviously, we're at home watching this because we are um, staying home and staying safe. So uh, let's start again uh, with some slides that I've um, prepared and we can go directly into our presentation. So here we are. Um, Yes, so it's vitamin D, very important. And today we have to go outside if you can, we, um, you know, for five to 10 minutes, get um, a little breath of fresh air and a little sun on your skin that will help a lot with your mood and also your vitamin D. So once again, if you have any questions, visit our website, truenosh.com. Um, I, I founded this company about four years ago, and you can always email me directly at info at truenosh.com. Okay, so yeah, why are we talking about vitamin D today? Um, mostly because it is very important for bone health. Um, if you don't have enough vitamin D, you um, younger people suffer from osteomalacia, which is um, rickets is a common term, and also older people will suffer from, from osteoporosis, which is like thinning of bones. Um, and um, my, my mother actually has suffered that, and she's taking supplements, she's, she's doing some weight training exercises to help her out with doing um, um, better for her bone health and to uh, increase lean body mass. So that's important for um, women and men over the age of 50 to start doing some um, weights, um, it's just light weights. You can even lift water bottles if you want at home um, while you go on a walk, you know, and that's something already that's weight bearing and uh, you can increase your lean body mass by doing that. Another reason why vitamin D is important because it is um, uh, helps incre increase the immune system, like your your uh, defense system for your body. And now we are battling uh, a virus, um, COVID nineteen, and uh, some researchers have done some research with vitamin D, and I'll talk about it in the in the bottom of the slide. And also, um, it can help with preventing cancer and um, some studies have been done on prostate cancer for men also. So as you can see, all these three important um, criteria and, 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 and topics why vitamin D can affect our health, not just bones, everything else, including immune system and um, help uh, decrease the risk of cancer. So recently, COVID-19 is the uh, hot topic and um, uh, some research has been done in New Orleans with COVID-19 patients. And they found that the sickest patients, like 100% of the sickest patients usually in the ICU, which is the intensive care unit, are who are under um, 75 are deficient in vitamin D. So um, that's a, a, an important uh, stat to understand how vitamin D could um, be related to the uh, virus that we're battling today. Um, because it re regulates the immune system and, cause, um, and also helps um, decrease inflammation. So people who are deficient in vitamin D can have a higher inflam inflammation in their body um, and, and cause them to be more uh, affected because of this virus. So people with low vitamin D have more severe symptoms of the virus, as I'd said before, and are at higher risk of being admitted to the ICU. And that risk is about 12 times higher, okay? All right, so not to deter you, ooh, my slide is a little bit weird here. It's kind of funny, but it's okay. Um, it just means, um, so I'm just gonna read it off. So what is vitamin D? Um, it is discovered in the 1920s um, because of rickets. So as I said in the previous slide, younger people who don't have enough vitamin D or deficient vitamin D 
can have a chance of developing this disease called rickets, and it is painful bone disease in children. Um, but since then, um, pe people and companies and the government have um, fortified foods, which is seen in cereals and milks, um, to increase the vitamin D intake in children. And since the fortification of foods, rickets have potentially disappeared and um, no, no real uh, ricket uh, cases have been shown in the last uh, 100 years. So what is vitamin D again? It is fat soluble and it is deemed a vitamin, but it's actually not technically a vitamin and I'm going to tell you why. Because it's, it's produced by the body on the skin and it is obtained from foods, but even when you eat um, vitamin D, high, high vitamin D foods, you still have to transform it in the body before it can do any good. Um, so vitamin D in your body also helps increase the absorption of calcium. So if you don't have enough vitamin D stores, um, your absorption of calcium, calcium is definitely lower. And it says here that it's, um, and for a normal person, you can absorb uh, only 10 to 15 percent of dietary calcium, calcium from your food. But with enough vitamin D stores, you actually include, increase that uh, twofold to 30 to 40 percent. So that's why vitamin D is important to help your bone health because it increases your absorption of calcium. And definitely it's an essential part of your health, um, but only minuscule amounts are required because, um, as we said, we produce it um, our own when we go out in the sun on our skin. So where does it come from? Yes, I said that you should go out today for five to 10 minutes a day, and it should give you quite um, a good dose of vitamin D on your skin to be converted um, into the active form. So sunlight is, um, is a way to do so, and the UVB energy converts the vitamin to D3. Um, but if you can't go outside today, some foods that you can consider um, is to eat uh, fish, and it is um, in egg yolks. So those two are, are the um, uh, foods that are known to have vitamin D in them. And supplements also um, have uh, a good a great source of uh, vitamin D. We'll talk about that later on, how much and what to look for when you go out and buy supplements. And they're usually, interestingly, um, there's two forms of D, D2 and D3. Um, the supplement form is a D2, and it's um, known to be exposed to some UV light, which can help um, you convert it to the active form in your body. Some people um, ask me, well, what, what uh, causes vitamin D deficiency? Well, um, some of my friends have like a darker skin tone. Um, people who um, have a lighter skin tone usually have a better uh, way of absorbing the sunlight, but um, darker skin tones um, tend to have a reduction of vitamin D absorption and, and production. So um, if you have a darker skin tone, you might want to consider a, um, uh, a lower um, uh, sunscreen, like not, maybe like not from uh, 60, go to like a 30 or 15. Um, and then uh, some people who have intestinal disorders and can't absorb fat. So as I said previously, uh, fat is important to help you absorb vitamin D. Um, and we said last week, and we talked about cholesterol, um, some of the healthy fats um, to consider. Um, so like avocados, uh, what else did we say? A grapeseed oil, olive oil. Um, those are, are um better fats to take and also fish, right? So some fatty fish like salmon, sardines, those are also important to, um, for, for you to eat when you go um, um, out and, and buy food for yourself. Look for those um, uh, types of fish to help you uh, ingest vitamin D and also help you absorb it um, correctly, right? 
and some people who um, are uh, immunocompromised and also uh, people who have liver or kidney disease can reduce um, active vitamin D conversion. And that will be in the next slides because I'll tell you how actually vitamin D is converted into our body. And the, and the kidney and liver are, play a really major role in doing that. So it's not about just, you know, um, focusing on the skin, but also the overall health of your organs too. So eating healthy and wholesome foods that can keep your liver happy and, and kidney liver happy by, you know, not drinking too much alcohol um, and not always overworking and, and sleeping um, sufficient amount of hours can um, help your or kidney and liver stay healthier to um, convert vitamin D into its active form. And some of us here uh, in, in BC and also in the higher latitude um, um, areas of the world, uh, sunlight is not abundant all year round. So um, the deficiency of sunlight in the autumn and winter months can cause um, low vitamin D levels in our body. And then when people are afraid to go out in the sun for too long and they put ample amounts of sunscreen and that can um, deter your skin from absorbing vitamin D. So the, the idea is to not uh, stay in the sun for too long. I mean, five to 10 minutes at a time and then come in for some shade and then go out again to protect yourself and always um, you know, reapply your sunscreen. Um, and that's something that you can consider in the months to come because summer is coming in uh, the Western world. So um, sun, yeah, how it happens, it's really interesting because um, the UV radiation um, at, uh, is on our skin when we go out to absorb sunlight. And then um, we absorb the vitamin D precursor. Um, and, and then it, it actually travels into a, in our body and, and heads to the liver. And that's where it picks up oxygen and hydrogen um, and it gets converted into another form of vitamin D before it hits the kidney. And that's when that important step to transform the, 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 active, the vitamin D that we've absorbed in the sunlight or in our food to make an active form of vitamin D. So steps you can take to increase your vitamin D and, and, um, and stores is adapt a balanced diet. As I said, um, you know, be nice to your body, choose uh, different colors of fruits and vegetables um, and, and good fats. Um, if you guys review my last week's and the week before the, the presentations, they both talk about different types of food that you can go out and buy um, in the grocery stores to help you adapt a balanced diet. A balanced diet is super easy when you can, um, you know, understand eating even color, different colors of vegetables and understand balancing different sizes of meats and, and also starches on your plate too. Okay, um, and then an active lifestyle. Um, obviously now we can't gather in large groups, but you can definitely go on lar uh, long walks um, and, and find shade when it gets too hot. Take a break out of your day to just um, go outside your front door your, or in front of your office and just take a little breath of fresh air. That's also great. And um, it shouldn't be so hard, five to 10 minutes, right? You just have to schedule that in in your day to, to kind of go out and, and absorb some, some sunlight, okay? And another way that you can find out what your vitamin D risks are is, is to go get a blood test. And thankfully, um, we can still go see our doctors and you can still have them um, recommend a vitamin D uh, blood test. And uh, I'll tell you uh, in the next slide uh, what um, measurements you, you should be looking for and what your doctor will look at when they see your blood results. Okay. Um, so now um, we're going to talk a little bit about supplementation and how what to look for when you go out to vitamin um, section in your grocery store or, or um, some supplement stores. 
Um, but it's not until 1997 uh, that the RDA, which is the Recommended Dietary Allowance, that's what RDA stands for, um, was recommended to be 200 IUs, which is called international units for all adults. Um, but since then, there are uh, a lot more research and there is a growing evidence that vitamin D is deficient in the northern and, and Western world. So now the RDA for um, older people have, uh, for, for uh, 50 to 70 year old um, people has increased to 400 um, and 600 for people that are even older that are older than 70. But then more and more research has happened in the last few years. And um, now, um, physicians and dietitians are recommending that even 800 to 1,000 a day um, is needed to help you sufficiently um, get enough vitamin D in your body. Um, so the um, Institute of Medicine actually said that um, anything that is above the, uh, sorry, I'm going to turn this off, um, the RDA levels, which I have a table of, um, and you can also find in Health Canada's website, um, and you can just Google Health Canada vitamin D uh, intake or, or recommended levels, and it'll pop up. Um, and then they said that no additional health benefits have been associated with intakes with the level that is recommended with the new RDA. Um, so this is it. So you, when you Google Health Canada guidelines for uh, vitamin D, um, you'll see very different results for different um, age groups. So if I go on, um, you know, infants from start from 400 IU, which is on the label, can you can either find the IU or the micrograms, and that's. Um, related to about 10 micrograms. And as you age and get older, your um, requirements get higher. So about 600. And then um, the older you get, about when you get to um, 70, um, you need about 800. And then when you're pregnant or, or lactating, feeding your baby, um, women need at least 600 IUs, okay? And then on the other side, you'll see the tall bra upper intake because um, some people don't understand that um, one tablet in, in a bottle can have more than your daily recommended um, allowance. So those people um, should review these guidelines and not go too crazy and not go above the upper intake because not enough research has been shown um, with these amounts to and they might uh, not be ideal for your body and actually can cause harm okay all right so um, I'm just gonna before I go on further Taylor is there any questions with anybody on Facebook or um, uh, zoom that I need to address nope Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. So when you get your results from your doctor, um, usually when you're, you know, um, fine, your doctor don't really, doesn't really call you and, and let you know, um, but you can also request the results and, and go and um, ask him what he advises and what he thinks of your blood tests. And some, some things to look for when you look at your results. And um, uh, there are a, a few levels that are, are of concern. So 50 or above is um, something that you, you don't really need to supplement uh, vitamin D with. And um, if, if you are sufficient at about 50, then, then you don't really need to do anything too special with your diet or um, to uh, increase your vitamin D stores. But when you are very close to 50 or a little bit lower than 50, about uh, 30 in the 30 to 50 um, range, then you are potentially at risk and you might wanna start eating more fish, 
Um, and you might want to start looking at supplements. And um, I don't recommend supplements until you know that you are at risk and, and you are um, able to find supplements. And if you're between 30 and 50, food sources like a fish, um, and uh, probably one egg a day is um, good enough to help you replenish those stores. But um, some, some individuals who have high cholesterol might not want to go that route. And some individuals who can't do physical activity and who can't exactly go out to um, absorb any sunlight, supplementation is the next um, um, uh, thing that you want to look at, right? So another point, if you're below 30, so you are definitely at risk. You might not be deficient, but you are at risk and you need to consult a doctor or dietitian to help you understand some food sources and um, lifestyle changes in order to help you increase that vitamin D level in your body. Okay. All right, so I always ask um, everyone that I see, choose your health because your body is the only thing that lives with you throughout your whole life and you need to be nice to it. Um, so diet can help, but it's hard to approach the new goals with the food alone. Um, as I said, those who have high cholesterol might not wanna eat more than one egg a day because that's already um, at your daily cholesterol amount recommended by um, Health Canada. So um, fish and shellfish, ha, uh, so these are some um, measurements. So five ounces of salmon is about a uh, small, small size of your palm. Um, and seven ounce of halibut, okay? And then 30 ounce of cod, right? Uh, cod, you can eat a little bit more, but it is a big um, portion, right? Um, and then with uh, tuna, so if you can get tuna, that is low in mercury, so some of the smaller fishes, right? But also tuna is known to be not sustainably farmed and not sustainably harvested, so you might not want to go that route. But these are just um, some measurements and, and guidelines for you to go out and look for when you go in, into the supermarket and buy your fish. Um, um, and as I said, one egg yolk is about 20 international units, and that's already your our daily cholesterol intake. Um, so that's why manufacturers fortify milk and yogurt, orange juice and cereals with vitamin D. And you can just look at the label to see how much vitamin D that you're gonna get. Um, and some servings will provide 100 IUs or some servings will provide entirely uh, 400 IUs and you don't need to eat too much of it. Um, but uh, as I said, supplements are a good way to go if you are at risk only and if you need the supplement. And a multivitamin, most of them provide at least 400 IUs in one, one tablet. And the idea is to read the labels carefully so you don't want to get too much, right? And you also don't want to get too little. So understanding your labels, read everything that you buy, um, and it's a good way to understand where your food come from, comes from, what ingredients um, you're ingesting into your body, and, um, and, and a good way to educate yourself from what the food you eat. Um, so caught liver oil is rich in vitamin for sure, but that's why I'm asking everyone to read the labels because it can have a lot of vitamin A also. And that's um, some, one vitamin that you don't want too much of. And I will probably talk about that in one of the upcoming month, uh, or weeks of my um, sessions on Tuesday. Once again, our friendly uh, nutrition facts table. So it is in the bottom of the nutrition facts table. And if you refer to the Health Canada um, chart, uh, about one IU international unit is about 0 0.025 micrograms. So about 10 micrograms is about 400 IUs. And that's something that you wanna make sure that you look at and during the autumn and winter months when there's not as much sunlight, you want to increase a little bit of your vitamin D intake. And this is my last slide. And this is 
basically the whole idea of my presentations is not just to concentrate on one nutrient because your overall diet is what it will make the biggest difference in your health. And that's why each week I'm gonna talk about different types of nutrients and food to help you understand the variety that you can do at home and when you're eating out. Um, and then I want to reiterate because I work with the diabetes population mostly because it is um, something that it's very dear to me as my father passed away from diabetes about 10 years ago and that's the whole reason why I went to the food business is products often have um, labels that might deter you or, or make you want to go buy it because it's low fat, but you want to understand the whole concept of the label is to help you want to buy the product and always look at the back, just look at the ingredients um, and just make sure that the product that you're buying and you think it's healthy, it's just not low in fat. Um, it has to also contain, you know, um, less processed ingredients and less refined carbohydrates, calories, sugar, and sodium. Okay, and, and once again, we can always uh, refer back to Health Canada's website to help you get more information um, and get us to become happier and healthier. And that's it. Um, so we're going to get this screen back up and so you can come and uh, visit me in the kitchen. So, All right, so we, oh, actually now I have a question. Um, so there is, so we have a question, Odin. So he's asked, is there a way that you can know if you're deficient without getting a blood test? Well, there are certain things that you can look for in your body. So one of the things is mood. Um, and in the winter months, you'll, you'll find yourself um, maybe moody and not as excited to do certain things like you would um, compared to summertime and that could be um, a way to um, to understand and hear listen to your body and then you want to go and and get that blood test and if you really don't want to get the blood test you can start by increasing your your fish um, uh, sustainable fish intake and you can see if you don't if if you don't have uh, high cholesterol um, try adding an egg a day to your daily um, uh, intake of food okay is that something that you can do but there is really no way for for sure to understand um, that you're low in vitamin D um, um, unless you take a blood test. You can feel like bone aches and, and things um, that might um, have uh, that uh, effect in your body if you don't have enough um, strength to do certain things, um, walking and, and, and lifting heavier things, if that's a little bit more work for you, that could have um, potential um signals for you for to tell your that you're low in vitamin d but that um can be other things as well too right so um i would if you are questioning your vitamin d stores then you would go um and and basically make sure of that by um getting some evidence with a blood test Okay, so I'm gonna share some recipes with you. Um, this is what I do on a weekly basis. I just wanna make sure that the camera is facing my prep table here. Um, we're gonna do a banana pancake. Um, we're not gonna use any flour with this banana pancake. It's just bananas and eggs um, and there's no sugar and you can do a, uh, you can add a little pinch of uh, salt, as I said, uh, salt uh, helps bring out the sweetness of um, the fruits that we're using to sweeten our um, recipes. And I'm also going to make a homemade, uh, really quick mayonnaise using um, some grapeseed oil and also an egg, and then um, some canned sardines. And I know a lot of people live um, on their own, and it's hard to buy a big 
fish or even a slice of fish. So canned fish is fine. Um, and some canned fish like canned salmon or canned sardines, you can uh, use to make a dip or a spread for some crackers or even you can even use it um, as a spread on some fruits like an apple is what I'm going to do today. Okay, so is there any more questions before I go on to start my cooking demo? If not, again, you can email me at truenosh.com, info at truenosh.com, and we'll try our best to get back to your questions right away. All right, so uh, let us do, let's see, let us do the uh, mayonnaise first, because we're gonna wait for the sweet pancakes afterwards. Um, so what I'm going to use is just one egg. I have a immersion blender here. Um, these are very easy to find. You can find them online. You can also get them at uh, local stores like Canadian Tire or um, Walmart or uh, uh, similar stores like that. And sometimes you can even find it at a garage sale, which is uh, a very exciting find for me. Um, I, I like this because you can make really beautiful soups with it, you can make sauces with it. I think I've used it in most of my presentations in the last uh, few weeks uh, on the, the channel. So uh, you'll need one of this. If you don't have this, you can use a whisk and just whisk it by hand. Or you can use a uh, Vitamix, like a blender that's um, similar, that has a blade, um, like Magic Bullet or Vitamix or a food processor. Those are fine to use. And the reason why I like to make my um, own mayonnaise is I can um, control the amount of oil and what type of oil I'm using. So I know um, that is a healthy type of oil that I've uh, purchased from the store and I, I trust um, that I'm only gonna put really good yummy things in here. So I have eggs, I have some oil, and I'm actually going to, I forgot to get some mustard and some lemon juice. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have some lemon juice here. And then a little bit of Dijon mustard. It doesn't have to be Dijon mustard, it can be any type of mustard and a little pinch of salt. So I'm using only a, a quarter teaspoon of salt, okay? Some recipes you'll find online, they'll ask you to say a whole teaspoon, but we're going to also try to decrease our sodium intake and only use um, a quarter amount. And you can add some things like um, garlic powder later and then also some herbs like dry thyme or rosemary to make your mayonnaise um, more flavorful that way. Okay, so let me put in a whole egg. Some recipes will also just add, um, have you add egg yolk, but I don't mind just adding the whole egg because, you know, what are you gonna do with the egg white if you're not gonna make a meringue or something later? Okay, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. Dijon mustard. It's about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard and then also a teaspoon of, um, you can either use vinegar or lemon juice. I like lemon juice because it gives it a little bit more citrusy um, taste to this, but apple cider vinegar or white wine vinegar or just white vinegar works just as well. The vinegar helps the egg co coagulate and helps the protein um, not break down, okay? And one egg, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and then as I said, I didn't add it in yet, um, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then this way, um, if you think you might need a little bit more salt, you can add it after. But if you add too much, you can never take it out, right? Um, so there's a great measurement tool for me. I'm going to add one, ooh, this is a new, 
oil. So I'm using grapeseed oil. You can use avocado oil. You can uh, use safflower oil, sunflower oil, olive oil because we're not cooking high temperatures. So any of those oils work or even like rice bran oil um, works well and flaxseed oil. So um, do, your, do your shopping. It doesn't have to be one particular type of oil. Okay, so it's about one cup. of oil to one egg, okay? And then we're going to put our immersion blender all the way to the bottom, and we're gonna leave it there for a bit um, to help it settle down and sort of mix it a little bit. Make sure the egg is directly in underneath the, um, the head of the uh, mixer. And then you want to start by slowly pressing the button and, and don't hesitate, okay? Um, keep the, the motor on the bottom and until you see white happening in the bottom, then you can bring your immersion render up and mix the ingredients around. Okay, so how easy was that? We made mayonnaise in about 30 seconds, and it's very yummy mayonnaise. And you don't have to um, make too much of it, right? So sometimes the jar of mayonnaise um, in the store is really big, and you'll have to store it in the fridge for a little bit longer. But this way, making mayonnaise at home, you'll know that there's no preservatives, um, and you'll know every ingredient that you've added to it. And I've um, definitely helped support the local community here. Um, we have some uh, organic eggs from j and &E Egg Farm, and I visited them at the Quitlam Farmer's Market, and they're wonderful people. So the mayonnaise, you can just store in this container um, with a lid, and it'll last about four or five days, um, and you can use it on uh, sandwiches, you can use it um, in cooking, you can use it in a dip, and which is what we're going to do today. So I have um, a can of sardines. I'm not going to use all of it. I want to leave some mayonnaise so I can, you, um, you know, make other things with it. But um, you can get different types of canned fish if you can't buy fresh ones and you want to cook the fish also and you don't need too much. So I'm going to get about two pieces of sardines out of here. And this one, it comes in a tomato sauce, which is great, so I don't have to add any flavor into it. And then make sure that there's um, no added sugars also in your fish. And then I'm just going to add about half a cup of this mayonnaise into my um, sardines. And I'm just going to use my spoon and just mix that around okay and then if you have some vegetables um, like carrots or celery you can chop that up i'm going to go ahead and grab a carrot which i also forgot to get and then some herbs like um, garlic powder or thyme you can use we have um, some chili pepper also and this is uh, a little bit of um, uh, BC Garlic, this is a, a local company also, and this is called a Garlic Skate Powder, which is the green part of the garlic. I'm gonna add a little bit of that so we don't have to add extra salt. And then just um, dice in some carrots or celery or even cabbage. Okay, I'm going to rinse this part out. 
really well. Okay, so then we can chop the carrot into small pieces. I'm just going to use half a carrot because this is a small spread and dip that we're using. And we're just going to dice it into small pieces. If you want to blend anything into the mayonnaise, um, you can also do that with the handheld blender after it becomes mayonnaise, okay? All right, so let me just finely chop the carrot into small pieces. And now you've given your dip a little bit of texture and fiber and also vitamin A. So that's um, something that you can uh, consider adding a little bit of color also. If you get some uh, broccoli, you can also um, chop up the ends and use the crowns for the dipping, right? Okay. So I have chopped half a carrot and this is the perfect amount to add to about half a cup of the um, dip or spread that I've just made with the sardines and the fresh mayo. Okay, great. We're just gonna mix that well. And I do have a plate of some whole wheat car uh, crackers here and I'm going to serve it with also some sliced apples and then the rest of this carrot too. So this is a great snack to have um, in the afternoon when you need a little bit of a picker upper. Okay. So some carrot sticks, some apple slices, and some whole wheat crackers is pretty amazing to energize your day. So I chose some green apples. You can use whichever apples you want. And if you're letting it stay around for a couple minutes, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on top um, so the, the apple doesn't turn brown and it'll just um, keep its color for a little bit longer. Okay, so I have some apple slices that I've cut. And this is also a great presentation. Um, kids and adults would love to do. And it's a great way to hide your vegetables and fish. Okay, and here we are. There is our first recipe. I'm gonna come over and show you. Uh, you guys can take a look and how beautiful this dip is. Okay, and then now we're gonna go into our next recipe, which is a banana pancake. So once again, we're going to um, use one egg, um, and this makes about two, two pancakes. You can do two eggs, so it makes four pancakes, so it's um, good for a meal. Um, and I'm gonna use a slightly um, uh, ripened banana. For those of you who are um, concerned about your blood sugars, um, I wouldn't go with something too ripe but any banana will do, one whole large one, okay? And I'm gonna also add in a pinch of salt, so about a quarter teaspoon of salt gets into my blender, and I'm also gonna use a handheld blender for this. For this one, um, you can just use the mayo one because we're adding just, the mayo one only has eggs um, and, um, some lemon juice and a little bit of mustard. Okay, so we're gonna add about two eggs to this and it should make about four small pancakes. Just gonna go rinse the head of the um, blender and I'll be right back.
Okay, so here we go again. I have some baking powder. If you don't have baking powder, you don't have to use it. It'll still make pancakes okay. So just a little bit of baking powder. If you have baking soda, you can also use that. Just make sure you add a little lemon juice or vinegar to it to help it um, become active. Okay, so I'm gonna add only half a teaspoon of um, baking powder to this. Oops, I lost a little bit. Okay, and that's it. So two eggs, one large banana, a little bit of baking powder. If you don't have baking powder, you can use baking soda with a little bit of um, vinegar or lemon juice. And we're going to use our handheld blender again. I'm going to make sure that all the bananas have been incorporated in. And this time you can throw in things like mixed nuts or seeds or even um, uh, oats if you want some fiber into this. Or even add a scoop of uh, fiber like Metamucil or Celium husk that we um, all, uh, used last week for the cholesterol segment. And then you can just turn on your skillet. Here. and make pancakes. So a little bit of um, cooking oil. Okay, we're gonna wait for the pan to get hot. This is going to um, stay here for a little bit. Um, adding some blueberries is also an idea. Um, now blueberry season is um, coming up and um, just any type of fruits. You can even mash up some bana more bananas so that it's chunkier. Um, I actually uh, love to add some uh, sesame seeds to give it a little bit of a crunch inside, which I'm going to find, or even flax seeds actually. So flax seeds is another um, wonderful ingredient that you can add, and it's got a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, this particular flaxseed is given to me as a gift by my uh, dietitian friend, Amy. Um, she's a wonderful dietitian from Liban Nutrition, so you can go check out her website um, and uh, find out more information with the uh, Chinese population. She leads uh, tours in Richmond at Price Mart. So a little bit of flax seeds goes a long way. And then once the pan is hot, you can add slowly, drizzle it in. So I love this um, container because it's got a spout and you're gonna drizzle that in slowly in the middle. Okay, and it is a little bit runny. So make sure a little bit of that edge gets cooked first before you add um, a little bit more to top up the pancake. Okay, so I'm going to get a plate and then I'm going to chop up the rest of the apples and serve it with this pancake. Okay, so the edges have cooked and I'm going to slowly add another bit of banana pancake to this and I'm going to get a nice spatula. And there you go. We're just waiting for the uh, underside of the pancake to get brown and we can flip it. So let me just check on if anybody has any more questions. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying the presentation and you can uh, make this at home pretty easily. can hear the pancake sizzle, so I'm very excited. Okay, so don't be too um, rough with your pancake. Once it starts lifting, it should be ready. And I'm gonna give it one more minute before I flip it.
Okay. I can hear the banana. I mean, I can hear the banana. I can hear it sizzle. I can smell the banana, actually. I love the smell of cooked bananas. And you can see that there is some bubbles on top of the pancake. And uh, once there's maybe like 10 bubbles on top, you'll know it's ready to be flipped. Oops, a bit watery still. Let me just wait a little bit. I think the, the pan was not hot enough when I put the pancake on. But no worries. I can see the underside and it looks very, very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it. Ooh, there you go. Okay, so just let it cook for another minute or so. I'm gonna bring you guys closer to my uh, skillet. And there you go, banana pancakes with no sugar, no flour, just eggs, bananas, a little pinch of salt, um, and some baking powder, okay? And after this side's cooked, I'm gonna bring it and put it on my plate and we can start on another pancake. I'm going to turn this off right now, and um, this is one pancake, and we can also cut up some apple slices thinly. And I'm going to get out some cinnamon, so cinnamon's also a wonderful spice, um, and it can help you regulate your blood sugar absorption. So. This is also uh, a beautiful way to serve your pancakes. This is with a little fresh fruits and a dash of cinnamon. So there you go. This is my two recipes that I'm gonna share with you today. I'm just gonna cut the cinnamon a little bit right now to finish it off. Woo. Okay. So pancakes, and we have a beautiful dip with some simple crudite to go with it, okay? Um, so yeah, that's all I have for today, and um, we'll see you next Tuesday again here with the Disability Foundation at the True Nosh Kitchen, um, and we'll be... Um, also sharing some recipes and some nutritional information, okay? I will uh, see you then, and if you guys have any more uh, questions after the show, um, please email me, info at truenosh.com, and I'm Renee. Okay, so I'm going to stop. All right, live stream is finished. Great. Thanks so much, Renee, that was awesome. Cool, thank you. Do you think I'll be able to get these recordings from you? I keep forgetting to record it, but I guess yeah. I always just download it, or you can email it to me when you have time, obviously. Yeah, I'll email you the uh, Zoom download link, download link, and then you can download it yourself directly from Oh, Zoom. wonderful, thank you so much. Awesome, all right, okay. see you next week, Renee. Yep, thank you.